While you may know of LSU through our national championships in baseball, football, and track and field, you may not know that LSU has one of the world's leading experts on tangible and embedded interactions, Dr. Brig Ulmer. In this podcast, you'll meet Dr. Ulmer and see an example of his latest research. So here we have uh, some fluid dynamics, and this will work a moment uh, from now. Uh, we can select some different uh, viewpoints here. And so you're seeing this particular fluid flow, uh, looking at it from the top, looking at it from the side. Now we can start uh, turning that about in different ways to get a better handle on that information. And one of the things that's interesting and special is I'm doing that here, partly while my eyes are on you uh, to, to be able to interact in this fashion, but also there may be someone remotely interacting. And so we have these funny little motors and, and brakes inside so that if you start turning something, I can't turn this physically until you let go. And that helps us pass control back and forth in different ways. Um, and so maybe trying that one more time, uh, there's a good chance, yes, when I put this back up, suddenly we have a very different kind of data set here. And it's not really that we have, um, there is always more we can do with a mouse, always more we can do with a keyboard. But if I have to sort of switch my mental gears and go in there at the Unix command line and do all sorts of funny things, even for the specialists, it takes real time. And especially in the application domains, you know, you've got a senior physicist or chemist or something. They really care about chemistry and physics, not all about the funny computer stuff. And so the easier we can make it for them to, to talk physics, talk chemistry, or talk outreach, um, that really impacts their ability to do what they care about while complementing it with all the, the magic that computation brings. So in this particular one, uh, there's a, a type of a microscope called a confocal microscope that actually lets a, a microscope see a, a three-dimensional volume of some small object like a bee or a fly brain. Um, this is a kind of microscope that we have on campus and we actually have some devices for the uh, scientists to see these in stereo as well. And that's another one of the contexts here. If you're wearing these sort of funny glasses around a big screen, it's a little bit harder to do everything with a keyboard and mouse, especially the moment two or three people enter and you don't want to have one person monopolizing. Um, and so that's what you're seeing. And here we're really just showing the basics that we can load up this data, we can move it about in different ways. But we also have other uh, devices that let us uh, uh, push in a couple different cross sections and move those about and look at all the different uh, subsets that have a particular value which you might let you tease out a tumor out of a data set or something of that sort. And so those are some of the things. Uh, we've also done a great deal of work um, with the electronics side here uh, to do all the fancy technologies that are sitting under the hood to make this work. Um, and so our efforts are really uh, jointly split in that way. Um, but those are some of the efforts that, that we're doing here on the tangible side. 